I'm not going to lie. I'm in total shock. Hey, y'all. Uh, just my window is closing super fast to get some more food in the ground and planted for my family. As you guys know, we planted a big garden already and we have a bunch of fall and winter crops that we can uh, eat off of and live off of up until the spring and maybe just a little bit further past that. But I'm gonna plant some more stuff today and I just feel like it's more important now for us to be growing our own food than maybe it has in years past, even though we've always kind of done it for several years now. It is a perfect time for us, especially to get carrots in the ground. And I'm gonna show you what me and Mary Carl have already done in the garden. And I wanna show you guys on how we plan on preserving a lot of this food that we're growing. So since we got our new pantry, I've been making my coffee in here. Got me like a little coffee bar section in here. And look, I got my compost bucket right here by my coffee. And why? Because coffee grounds make excellent compost. So as you can see, lots of coffee grounds in here. I get the recyclable filters, which are all compostable. And now we're just gonna go put this on the compost pile before we go uh, start planting in the garden. Let me show y'all. Hey, Foxy, what's going on, girl? Let me show you guys the driveway progression. Look at here. Look at here. Does this not look totally different, y'all? Now you can really see see the driveway now look at here it goes here curves around and then curves back around starting to really really look like we want it to now you can see mr greg's got it got that crown on there and it is looking awesome he says he's got the topsoil on the sides over here we can get that grass seed planted topsoil over here he's gonna spread this out and get that grass seed planted we're gonna plant trees here we're gonna plant some trees over here and it's gonna look awesome. All right, let's add some goodies to the compost pile. Take a look at the compost pile while I'm over here. Oh yeah. Y'all can see it is uh, starting to break on down now, which is awesome. It is looking, looking good. We just ain't had much rain to keep it moist. Like I really would like it. We are supposed to have a good bit of rain yesterday and just wasn't that much at all. And I made a video a while back, several years ago, several, several years ago about composting and the way I make compost. Uh, mine is very, very simple. I don't come out here. I don't, I don't put a thermometer in it. I don't gauge it. I don't water it. Uh, I just depend on mother nature to do its thing. Now, yes, it's going to take my compost a lot longer to break down and make compost versus me working it all the time, but mother nature will do it for me. Now, Brooke, when she does bring like a, a load of stuff over here with the tractor, she does turn it with the tractor bucket, which will help speed up the process for sure. Another thing that when I start talking about the compost is people want to know, does it smell? Does it stink? No, not at all. Uh, if your compost is properly done, and that is, is you got equal amounts of nitrogen and equal amounts of carbon, pretty much it's not going to smell. I mean, there's no odor here whatsoever. And when it breaks down, uh, it will smell like dirt. Absolutely will smell just like dirt. Mother Nature is amazing. Y'all, look at the garden. I'm not gonna lie. I'm in total shock about how awesome the garden's going. You know, this is our first actual big garden growing in the soil here on our farm, which I did have tested. I did have tested and I got very acidic soil. And if you guys don't remember last fall, me and Brooke put lime out on this area here because we knew we were going to be growing food and flowers in here but i got i got i got a rocky soil it's got a lot of gravel and rocks in it 
and it was really, really compact. But, but, y'all, look at this garden. Just look. This is absolutely unreal. I'm in total disbelief. We're fixing to eat turnip greens this week. We're going to eat turnip greens this week off, off these all top turnips. Our collard greens won't be far along and these guys will be ready in the next week or two. Now you can see I got some weeds trying to come up right over here and here. I mean, going through the rows, keeping the weeds at bay, but in the middle with these warmer temperatures we've been having, they're starting to pop up. So I'm gonna have to start weeding in between the rows now. But so far, man, this garden is unreal. And that rain yesterday we got, and I just weeded this yesterday, look at this. But look at the rain. That little bit of rain we got really has made the weeds jump up. But look how big everything is. Look at it. And let me tell y'all, look at here. This is our rutabagas, which we can eat the greens off this, but this is that root vegetable. And just look. Then look at our Swiss chard. And this is that rainbow Swiss chard. And look at the colors it has on it. We got some yellow ones. We got some red ones. Just beautiful, beautiful Swiss chard. And that's not long for being ready. Coming on down here, look at the broccoli. This is the green magic broccoli. And like I said earlier, this is the all top turnip greens. This is our collard greens. And over here is more broccoli. Matter of fact, this whole row is broccoli. Then over here is our kohlrabi. And then this is our cauliflower. Everything's looking just amazing. Now, you haven't seen this yet. You guys know that we started uh, our onion seeds in seed trays. And me and me and Carl planted those the other day. So you can see our onions right here. And they look little now. They look little now. And this is the onions we are deceiving. They look little now. Don't let them fool you. They look little now. But these onions are going to get huge. And or should get huge. If I, if I do it properly, they should get huge. But not only did we do onions, we planted our garlic, which is right over here. Which you really can't see anything because it's a bulb. And uh, these guys will pop on up pretty soon. So I did start some new seeds uh, day for yesterday. And I actually got some flowers planted. And you're thinking, flowers in the wintertime? Yes. Calendula is an awesome flower that will bloom. And we're in zone eight. And it does well here. And it will bloom all the way to spring. And just a beautiful, beautiful flower. Uh, known for its healing properties. A lot of people make salves out of it. And as you guys know, I love mixing and companion planting and mixing flowers and vegetables together for uh, for an array of reasons to bring in beneficial insects and y'all it just looks awesome it just looks pretty right and you know we're trying to become a, uh, an established flower farm in the area and so just getting some experience under our belt of growing flowers but i also planted some food i love arugula if you don't know what arugula is it's just a leafy green that you eat uh, it's got a little peanutty spicy uh, flavor to it. I love it. To me, it's not very popular here in Alabama compared to all, a lot of other greens that are grown here, but I love arugula, especially in salads. Speaking of salads, I started two different types of butterhead lettuces. Got those guys in there. I got some more lettuce that I'm going to start, but I'm going to wait probably the next week to get those guys planted. And that way I can have me a good rotation because these lettuces are going to all be ready probably at one time and they're not a cut and come back. So I'm gonna cut these lettuces and they're gonna be done. So I wanna to try to have as much food as possible for us throughout the growing season. So I will continue just to rotate lettuce seeds in and out among some other things um, as we go forward. All right, let me grab my horse plow with the uh, drip irrigation attachment on it. See, I think there's several mistakes people make with carrots. And here's what carrots like. They like really loose soil. Uh, they really like sandy loose soil if you have it. Now here, I don't have that. Once you get past about that 
four to six inch layer of topsoil, I get into this really rocky, sandy mix that's really compact. So I'm not exactly sure how my carrots are gonna do. Now, I've had people ask me, how come my carrots don't get long? How come my carrots curve? That's why, you, you, these carrots love loose soil. Really like it, sandy, loose soil. But also, to me, the biggest mistakes people make with carrots are they plant them at the wrong time and they don't give them enough water. You, dude, your ground's gonna have to stay pretty moist for about a week. Now, a lot of other seeds that you can direct seed, uh, you don't have to do that at all. You can just plant them and there's enough moisture in the ground to get those guys going. Carrots are a different animal. You really wanna keep your ground moist with carrots. I've even seen people turn on the drip irrigation a day or that night prior and get the ground moist. Uh, we had rain yesterday, so this is gonna be a good good day for me to plant my carrot seeds. Also, I'm gonna install that drip irrigation and cut it on and get the ground moist. And I'll run that drip irrigation every day for five, six, seven days until I start seeing those guys germinate. Carrots love water. So, just remember that. Moisture is gonna be key with growing your carrots and getting them going. The other thing is planting them at the wrong time. Uh, I'm in zone eight, as I said before, and you guys mostly know that I'm in central Alabama. We plant our carrots in October, November, and harvest them in March and April. We're gonna harvest them in the spring. We're gonna let our carrots overwinter. So they're gonna be completely fine in the ground during winter time, they're gonna be growing, and then come springtime, we're gonna pull them up and harvest them. Well, I used to plant my carrots in the spring Carrots do not like our super hot climates. I would plant them in the spring and get a small harvest come early summer. But my harvest, when I plant them in the fall and let them overwinter, have been amazing. If you follow us along, you've seen our carrots in the past. We grow a good bit of mini carrots, or we did on our old farm. This is my new farm. And have had great success at growing carrots. Other thing that we're gonna grow today, and this is for everybody. If you wanna grow something that grows really, really well, that's easy, you don't have to worry about it, it is just, it's just gonna grow. And in my opinion, there's three, three things that Hoss has that you can just pour on the ground, lightly cover it, don't have to do much to it, it's gonna come up fast, you can cut it and it's gonna come right back. And that is their premium mixed green mix. This thing here, you just, I'm telling you, it's just gonna make this huge mass of mixed greens. You don't have to worry about weeds because it's gonna outgrow your weeds. It's gonna cut and come back. You don't have to do anything to this. It's gonna grow. And the other thing that they have is tat soy. Again, super easy. You're just gonna, you're just gonna sprinkle it out by hand, lightly cover it, and it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna cut and come back. You can cut that tat soy, and like two or three days later, you can make another cutting. So tat soy is one, and then the other one is the all top turnip greens. Uh, we got those planted out there. That's what we're fixing to harvest this week and eat. It's way ahead of everything else. And again, you can just plant a thick mass of, the, of it in all three of these, and it's gonna grow thick. You don't have to worry about weeds, and all of it is cut and come back. So if you're a beginner gardener and are trying to get some experience and, and trying to grow your own food, look at these fast growing greens. Um, of course, we use Hoss. Go check out Hoss's website and I'll put a link to Hoss down below. And as always, if you do use our link, we get a small commission at no extra cost to you guys and it does help our family out. And also, if you use promo code COGSQUAD22, you'll get a free pack of collard green seeds, which if it's too late for you to plant now, you can plant collards in the early spring. All right, so let's grab our drip irrigation and get the irrigation in the ground and uh, get this stuff planted for our family. Oh, and I do have help coming. Brooke's finishing up her chores and she's on her way to help me. Uh, Mary Carl, as you guys most know, she loves gardening almost as much as I do, she really does, but she's under weather right now. The old flu bug has found, our, found its way to our family. Uh, me and Brooke have actually been fighting it off. We can feel that we're fighting it off. So hopefully, 
hopefully we can keep fighting it off. All right, help's on the way. I'm fixing to put the drip in, and we're fixing to get down. show you guys what carrots we're planting this year this is one called envy we planted this one started planting this one a couple of years ago best tasting carrot i ever had and that's why i grew this one this one's this one's so sweet this one actually this would be perfect for carrot cakes i mean it is super sweet it's one of the sweetest carrots i've ever tasted it is absolutely delicious and it was so easy to grow and made a ton of carrots all right so this is mary Cross favorite and it is the purple elite she loves these carrots she loves all of them this is her if you had to ask her what her favorite vegetable is it's a carrot it's a carrot she loves carrots and um oh i can remember when she was three going out there and pulling carrots up and washing them off and eating them straight out of the ground she loves them but the purple elite is one of her favorite carrots and this is one that if you really want to get children involved grow these you know your grocery stores all have these orange carrots but purple carrots and when you slice it is yellow in the middle if people oh, want to yeah, get sure. children involved in gardening kind of grow some of these specialty type things that are um, really easy to grow and it really does pique their interest and that's what it did with mary carl she, she loved those purple carrots now this is a new one for me and this is a new one for hoss and the reason why I got it is because it says it does well in compacted soil. And it's called Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get super long. It's going to get fat and a, a medium size length. And uh, I'm anxious to see how this one does. Well, you know, I, when we do a live, a lot of times we'll take questions. Yeah. And a lot of questions when going back and reading over some of the questions we didn't get to were how why are my carrots crooked yep why can't i grow straight car carrots and you had an immediate answer when i told you people wanted to know that yeah. so what is it the ground's too hard is it is compacted so you probably got a nice topsoil layer that's probably fluffy four to six inches or maybe less and then when you get carrot starts growing and it hits that hard underneath soil um that's compacted and it's just gonna stop it's just gonna, it's gonna stop right there but do you think those people that can't grow straight carrots would do better with a hercules carrot i would give it a shot i really would it's gonna be our first year growing these and that's what the description says in it so i would definitely give it a shot that's a good name because you know hercules can that's what it looks like burst it well that's open. exactly what it looks like and it may help you with your compact soil and i tell you what i would do is and you would do it right now and that is if you if your if your carrots are growing crooked or growing short your soil is compact i would order me some tillage radishes and plant in your garden this year and they're going to get huge like sort of like this hercules carrot and they're great for going in and breaking up that hard compacted soil which we did this whole area last year so you think all in all that that may have helped some and it may have helped some i really do i really do think so and then the tarpon really helped a lot so I, I would be, not be mistaken to say that you're overall, you're pleased with the garden so far. Absolutely beyond pleased with the garden, to be honest with you. Was it worth living in the camper for a year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Think we're ready to plant? Yeah. We have markers made? No. Are we going to need markers? Yeah. <laughs> You're on top of things. Let me well, go you know, some. I remember putting a marker away with some seeds. Yeah, I got the magic marker. Oh, you got it this morning? Mm -hmm. You brought it. Mm -hmm. Plus, I keep markers in the uh, in the greenhouse, anyways. No wonder I hadn't been able to find one in the house. No, I actually bought some just for the greenhouse. Oh, okay. All right. Here's the thing about carrots: the seeds are extremely tiny, so the chances of you getting one seed and dropping it every so many inches is is impossible. Uh, a lot of people will mix sand up with the seeds and sprinkle it, and that kind of evens it out. I really love pelleted seeds when it comes to carrots, but this year Hoss had a hard time getting pelleted carrot seeds. And pelleted means is that that little tiny seed's got a clay coating around it, 
it makes it very, very easy to handle, you know, by picking it up. Oh my gracious. So, um, and these are big. Those are, those are big carrot seeds right there when it comes to carrots. I see. But you can see how hard it would be to, um, plant them. To plant them. A lot of people will tell you to thin them, to, to plant them and thin your seeds out. I don't thin my carrots. Uh, it's because we're not a market garden. Usually if you thin them, you're going to get a bigger carrot and less carrots. So, you know, it's whatever you want to do. I don't. It just, to me, it's a lot of unnecessary work for us. We're going to eat them all anyways. So when it comes to carrots, I don't thin mine. I just let them go. Space them and sprinkle them or just sprinkle them? You can them? space them if you want to, a couple, in, you know, three to four inches apart. And then I'm going to come back with a rake and lightly rake them. I think I need my glasses. <laughs> you think? I think. All 750 in my hand at one time. There you go. There's a tooth caught in the corner. There we go. Here we go. So you can just see just right down through there, be fine. Like that? Just like that. You're doing perfect. You're doing perfect. Traded Mary make... Carl in for me, didn't you? I did. Traded you for Mary Carl. I like carrots too. Yeah, this is one of my favorite things to grow. It's one of those things like onions. You know, you just don't. But once you do it. Yeah, you'll you'll once you get the hang of it, you'll grow them every year. It's just one of those things that I don't think is many people grow because they're they intimidated well they haven't been successful growing them in the past and um i gave everybody some tips earlier on the reason why their carrots probably don't do well germination is the main thing carrots are hard to germinate and so that's why we're going to keep this bed wet um pretty moist you know you don't you don't want standing water where your seeds are floating but you want to keep this area moist for about I would do it for 10 days. I said earlier five to seven, but maybe more like 10 days. We wow. want to keep this area nice and moist. So when, you know they're germinated when you start seeing green? Mm-hmm. You start seeing the little green come up. And you can eat the carrot greens too. Believe it or Can't not. Can't make a cake out of them though. Not a carrot cake out of the greens. You can use it for a garnish. They go more, may go more, may go further than I anticipated. Mm, I was wondering why you just had one row. So I misjudged. Well, normally I'm gonna tell you guys. Normally I would double row it. You can double row carrots. You can see I got my drip tape. You can plant carrots on this side. You can plant carrots on this side in double row. Um, I actually thought that I didn't have enough carrots to go down a whole row, and that's why I single rowed them. And so I'll know next year. I can actually double row my carrots. I never planted this many carrots before, so I just thought, I honestly thought they weren't going to go this far. I really I didn't. I think we've ever planted this many of anything. <laughs> no, no, this is a huge, huge garden that should feed our family all fall, winter, and spring long. Tanya, our beekeeper uh -huh. from Hidden Valley uh -huh. Farms. She was just here feeding the bees and she looked over and she said, man, y'all got a lot of greens. <laughs> we do got a lot of greens. I told her we'd be willing to share once they're ready. That's right. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. And it looks like all greens, but it's not. You know, we got broccoli and kohlrabi and Swiss chard. And... Well, I think she meant green color. Oh, I guess a it is a lot green of green color. color. It is a lot of green color. But it looks really pretty. Oh, it's gorgeous. Besides the fact that it's going to eat well, it looks beautiful. It is gorgeous. I was looking at the um, Swiss chard Pretty ain't when it. I came. And, man, that's just a beautiful plant in itself. Mm -hmm. It really is. And I had read some of you guys' comments, and you were talking about how pretty it is when it's mixed in with a, a dish yeah. when you cook it. So I'm looking forward to that. I can see that. The beauty in my tummy. <laughs> All right, Hercules. I'm not going to start them right. What do you think? You start them where you want to. Okay. Got them right there, Hercules. Let's see how far Hercules goes. All right, Hercules. And some people are going to say, what are you going to do with all these carrots? Uh, carrots are a root crop, and so they do store well. They're going to keep well. But also, last fall, we freeze-dried our carrots. And they freeze-dried extremely well. As a matter of fact, 
I think we ate them all before we even moved. We did. I was looking through some of my things that I had freeze dried in Mylar bags the other day and we didn't have any carrots. I think we ate them all. All right, so now it's time for the mixed greens. This is just like a salad mix. It's got a little bit of this, a little bit of that in it. Look at the maturity date on it, 21 days. What? So in three weeks, this will be ready to cut and harvest. This is why I tell, if anybody's new to gardening and wants something to get their confidence up, confidence up, this is one of those plants. You can, um, it'll you make you- plant this in a container. I mean, you could go We've and, planted in our green stalk planters. Sure, but I mean, you could plant it in a trough. You could plant it in anything. You could plant it in anything. You could just rake you out a little area in your yard. If you had a small raised bed garden with timbers or whatever, this is, this is the perfect, perfect, uh, seed mix to plant in there. It is super easy and it's cut and come back. So in 21 days you can cut it and then in about a week you can cut it again. And it's, it's awesome. So how thick do we plant this? We're going to plant it thick. The reason why I'm going to plant it thick is, is I want it to um, You want it to come up thick? I want it to come up thick because I don't want a weed competition. So do we need to make our little furrow a little bigger? Uh, Actually we can actually just kind of just kind of just sprinkle. kind of sprinkle it on this the ground is what i'm thinking and you tell me if you think this is right kind of like that just like that perfect just like that and i'm gonna come back and just slightly cover it up all right we got it rolling so just kind of flatten this out with mm -hmm. my just flatten your little spot out we like to get down and and, and personal with our with our garden <laughs> and dirt I like to see what's going on. Oh, these are pretty. Aren't these. they pretty? The color. Then this is going to be a giant, thick mass of green. Well, I remember you when you were working a full time job. You would go down to the garden in the morning before you left to go to work, especially this time of the year because uh -huh. it would be good in daylight by the time you went out. That's right. But it gets dark earlier, and you would pick you a mess of greens to have a salad for the day absolutely yeah you could just throw this out you don't have to throw it out and just get your rake and just lightly rake it this is one of the easiest things in the world to grow right here hands down so if you don't grow anything else this is it this tat soy and all top turnips you can grow all right so we got it all planted and just got the timer set for about three and a half hours and I'll check it then. You guys can see now how nice and moist it is. And this is what we want to keep the entire time we're trying to grow carrots. Just evenly moist. So first thing in the morning, I'll come out here and I'll cut this back on and get this drip tech going again and just keeping it like this until we get some good, good germination going. So this is how we plan on preserving a lot of our food this year including the fall garden and that is our harvest right freeze dryer now we got this late last year and we did do carrots that was a fall crop that we did do in it we did figs in it we did a lot of fruit in it but then our big move came and we haven't grown any vegetables you know since we moved over here until now now if you don't know about freeze drying it's way different than dehydrating it's not the same process what's awesome about freeze drying is is that you don't lose the nutritional value of the vegetables or fruit you put in it and the flavor that doesn't change the flavor as a matter of fact usually intensifies the flavor because all the moisture is drawn out of it it's almost like a like a like a i kind of to talk about it, like the texture what we freeze dry the carrots the figs and all it's almost like the texture of a lucky charms marshmallow if you know what i'm talking about that's sort of what the texture is like y'all saw in our live when we ate the candy the freeze dry candy and what it was like so 
that's the texture of it. But again, we add water to it and it goes back to its original state. That's what's so cool about freeze drying. And it's so easy. If you guys remember, all we're gonna do is just put our four trays in here. And this is the medium. We're gonna put our four trays in here, put this thing, shut the door, lock it up, cut it on. And then that's it. It does the rest. I would say this though. They are giving one of these away. If you go to their website, they're giving one of these guys away. So if you're interested in one and want a chance of winning one, go to the website, fill it out, and get yourself entered in a chance to win a freeze dryer. Also, also, they're running an awesome Black Friday sale right now, up to $500 off on freeze dryers. So be sure to check that out. So if you're interested in a freeze dryer, go check them out. Uh, now's a great time because of the sale and they're giving one away. I mean, you could just enter. I mean, what's, what's it going to hurt, right? <laughs>